on the ground at 107, 107. Circulation on the ground, saddle rope. The Center for Severe Weather Research, through funding from the National Science Foundation, is studying tornado genesis for their field campaign twirl. Twirl stands for tornadic winds, in situ, and radar observation at low levels. Doppler on wheels radar trucks, or DOWs, are used alongside instrumented pod deploying vehicles to collect data near the ground. Mobile X-band radar provides high resolution views much closer to the surface than distant fixed radar stations. The pods record wind speed, direction, air pressure, and relative humidity. When paired with the DAOs, the scientists gain an important correlation between radar scans and ground truth data. Should we send Dow even further? Further to the... Southwest? Sure. Well, this thing's moving northwest. Yes. May 24th, 2016. The Center for Severe Weather Research Team, or CSWR, awakens in Woodward, Oklahoma, on week three of the twelve campaign. Have to make a choice going up to the triple point. A diverse group of meteorologists, technicians, and student interns make up the CSWR team. Twirl is just the latest field research campaign in a respected history of scientific missions throughout the United States and the world and assessing the observations and assessing the state of the atmosphere and deciding multi-hour forecast of where a boundary might intersect a dry line. I can't imagine we can pick that in one county at this point. So that bullseye may disappear or shift around by a few counties. Um, at breakfast, principal investigators Dr. Karen Kosiba and Dr. Joshua Warman discuss their options for a tornado intercept. So that location is only one hour away, which means you know, we leave. If that really verified, we can leave here at four and still be there in time. Um, but we want to allow time to get two or three hours away and something's going to happen. Despite years of experience, tornado intercepts are still extremely difficult to pull off. The CSWR caravan heads north from Woodward toward a developing storm in southwest Kansas. In one of the pod deploying vehicles, Scout 3 is Tim Marshall and two CSWR interns. Tim is an experienced storm chaser and an engineer specializing in damage surveys. As a storm begins to initiate, interns Brandon and Katie prepare the pods for intercept. Driving west towards the storm, the team recognizes this may be today's only chance at a successful pod deployment. Just north of Mineola, Kansas, on Highway 283, the storm develops a wall cloud, suggesting that it is beginning to strengthen. As the Dows move into position for the imminent intercept, Scout 3 stops to observe and strategize on their next move. It might be starting to rope a little bit here. Once the Dows are in place, Scout 3 turns west towards the initial tornado, as a second tornado rapidly develops in a new wall cloud much closer to the team. Dr. Worman monitors the developing tornado on radar as he guides Scout 3 towards an intersection where the tornado is likely to form. There's a Dow there. See that? We're going to get behind the Dow.
With Dow 7 stuck in the mud, Dow 6 races to tow it out, but loses control in a power slide. West circulation. West circulation Copy, one mile south of 107. This. Where is it? The Dows are out of alignment, but they still try to collect data to make the scout's efforts worthwhile. Okay, the eastern uh, target has just crossed the road. We'll wait another minute or two. Oh, right in front okay. of us. Oh. All right, let's deploy the pod. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Stop, stop, stop. Stop, stop, stop. stop. Pod, 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 pod. Pods. What pod was down? Okay. Back. Where did I go? All right. Pod down again. Let's go. Pod down again. Circulation, Circulation. on the ground at 107. 107. Circulation on the ground. Saddle Road. After retreating from a close intercept, the crew of Scout 3 looks back at the weak tornado as it impacts their pod. But the idea is you're going to come in south of that. We'll turn here and get things. Tornado. Oh my gosh. Scout 3 continues north as three tornadoes occur simultaneously just to their west. 109, heading north on Primrose Road here, off of Primrose Road. Say we deploy a pot in front of this one. Yeah, well, we'll try. Right on these trees. Alright, we are stuck. Sorry. Scout 3 is stuck. Primrose Road 109. Repeat, stuck. Primrose Road 109. Over. With Scout 3 now trapped on a dirt road, the team is prepared to abandon their vehicles if the tornado turns toward them. The team watches anxiously as the twin tornadoes slowly drift north, missing them by one mile. The Weather Nation media team attempts to rescue Scout 3, but is unable to reach them. As the storm drifts north, it begins to weaken, while continuing to produce tornadoes, prompting the National Weather Service in Dodge City to issue a rare tornado emergency. Thank you. 
The Dows, still stuck in the mud, would remain there until long after dark. This is the CSWR is gonna love this. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know, Very nice. Got that. <laughs> While the Scout 3 team celebrates today's deployment, they are greeted by a spectacular example of anti-crepuscular rays. The team must now recover Pod K, which recorded data in a direct hit from a weak tornado. The wind data captured by Pod K will allow CSWR scientists to correlate mobile radar with surface measurements. This research will lead to a better understanding of the weather conditions preceding tornado genesis. on the right side. Okay. Can't say for sure unless we look at the data. Copy that. We are on our way. Just to inform you, our pod K had a very close approach. The stop sign next to it is bent. Irrigation pivots in the road uh, to the west overturn. They return to help the immobilized Dows, lit by a fiery sunset with momentous clouds, which are commonly seen after the most powerful supercell thunderstorms. That dragging? Yeah, that's seven. Like, we, we had Dow 6 pulling us, and all they did was drag us. We couldn't get out. It was, it's awful. We're trying to buy this wheat field. Well, at least part of it, more important. We, um, I brought up, and I don't think it'll work at all, but they were moving to the the Okay. We might be able to get it all when we retranslate it, especially, since it originally showed up as sectors. They certainly got some data, but we're not sure if they got all of it. Gotcha. Tim got a close call, if not a direct hit. Finally freed from the mud, the CSWR team heads home to Woodward in preparation for the next chase day. Gee, it's actually making a funnel here. Preliminary analysis of the data begins. You'll be able to see the road grid. That's, oh, the, that's, oh, the, that's yeah. the one mile. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. 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 
Yeah. 40 meters per second. Mm -hmm. and 30 meters per second. So it's definitely, so we call that a tornado. Well, a tornado. Right? Yeah. It's got winds on one side of maybe 90, uh, 80, which is enough to walk. Yeah. So this one crosses the road. I think your pies would probably here. I don't know how close they are. I'll have to see. Definitely right at that intersection. 107 Road and Sign. Right there. It's going to be on that right side because uh, you know, some stop sign is going to the north, right next to the pond. Oh, look at that. Yeah. They're also rotating about each other. That's what I'm saying. It's like a yeah. Fuji Waro yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah, keep watching. And then what really happens is it works because the whole thing wraps in into, each other. into each other. So even though those might have been a mile apart, now they're fine. And it's all part of that And it's all part. So there's one big vortex, which is kind of... That is really fascinating. Inside of there are one, two, three, four, five, maybe six different vortices, right? Now, if you're looking at it visually, you might think those are separate tornadoes. So now they've gotten within a mile of each other. And this is where Paul's saying it's a multiple vortex mesocyclone, and that's exactly what we would call this. So we would not want to get into the game of trying to say three tornadoes, four tornadoes, five tornadoes. We just say it's a bunch of mobile vortices. It's an evolving structure where they were kind of apart, but now they've gotten together. Right. A nice simple tornado. It breaks into something like that, where there's multiple vortices within a couple of kilometers. And then, but then it kind of contracts again. Dr. Warman and senior meteorologists determined that yesterday's tornado event was the result of a mesocyclone with five or more internal vortices. Some of them produce tornadoes, with up to three recorded on the ground simultaneously. Even after the day's mishaps, the team still collected valuable data that will help improve scientific understanding of tornado genesis. Take a drive under the moon. Let's take a drive under the somber sky. Let's take a drive under the moon tonight. Let's take a drive under the moon. The sleeping small towns will pass by. Like the months you've been away Let's catch up our lives In the hours till day Let's take a drive under the moon Let's take a drive